good morning from icy cold New York today. Um, not quite 7 a.m. Not quite 7 a.m. Okay, so I said I would do quantum field theory 2 using a simple example. The last time I set up a Feynman diagram of a particular type, uh, I'll go do it with numbers today. Okay, not completely, most of it. The second part of this calculation involves using the dimensional regularization formula and a little bit of renormalization, but that's topics for two whole lectures, so that's two extra lectures ahead before we finish that full calculation. Now I have to get a new, I have got new covers for this board here because that's destroyed and there are some holes in it, so I have to get a whole new set of coverings for this so that you can see the lectures more clearly. I put some holes in it accidentally. I had a target here and the arrows I used went right through it. Well, I'll show you. I, sometimes you, I have a problem with chronic archery and the arrows went right through the target and put little holes in the board. Now, a bow like this is actually quite lethal in the right hands. Let's start off. So, we'll do uh, six arrows. Now, see, I'm not... Normally, I can do that much faster, but right now, since I'm on the camera, I'm not doing it very fast. If I did that a few times, I'd get into the swing of it. But in the right hands, a horse bow like that, it's uh, Mongolian, can be quite lethal. Okay, so all those arrows are hit the target. So enough of that, let's go into our physics. Quantum field theory two, and what we did the last day was we took um, a theory that had two Feynman rules. Now from a theory with two Feynman rules, we had only this kind of one, we had this kind of rule, and this kind of rule. And we set up a Feynman diagram. Well, we did a two-point diagram. A two-point diagram being a two-point Green's function. That means, as I said before, a particle can change one or more of its attributes. That could mean it goes from place to place. It propagates. Well, it can do it very simply, or it can do it in more complicated ways. In this case here, here's a possibility. Oh, I was doing the wrong one. Okay. This one here contains two vertices. I set it all up. This one, and a complicated one. So let's see what the complicated one was like. Well, we had this, plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this this. So let's put letters in. <clears throat> A, B, B, C, D, D, E, C, F, E, F, G, G, H. I stuck them all together, right? So that we get this shape. This is called a loop and it's of order whatever this guy is. Well, here, here's what the Feynman rules look like. For one particular, well, we say gamma. So this is going to be of order gamma squared. Now, higher order loops will have um, more complicated situations, but for this particular diagram, we worked it all out. And we wrote it symbolically as an integral sum of these guys stuck together. Well, it's going to be delta AB, gamma BCD, B 
BDC. Delta DE, Delta CF, and the gamma here. And the delta GH. Well, what we do is we integrate over loops. Now, this is a Feynman diagram for the one loop case when we have the following. Now, let's get rid of that and show what kind of numbers would go in for this. And then I'll do a different case as an example. particular case for a propagator would be 1 over p squared plus m squared when it is done in Euclidean space. Top for, room for a whole top there in Euclidean space. And the vertex would be given by some constant, let's call it beta, over 3 factorial. Now, we don't even need to go near a path integral for this, but it would correspond to a particular action. And the action is an integral overall space-time for a Lagrangian, and of course this is Euclidean. As I mentioned, Euclidean. Uh, to get back to Minkowski space, <clears throat> we have to go through a process called um, analytic continuation. These are the Feynman rules for a simple theory that we have a Lagrangian that looks like this. I have the two mu's downstairs because it's in Euclidean space, and that would look correspond to actually this. Just a Kronecker delta. All right. Now this part of the Lagrangian always gives the propagator. Plus a potential. And we will add in a source term. I wrote it the wrong way the last time. It's j of x, pi of x, to give a source. The general idea, and with a minus sign, the general idea is that we have an operator acting on a field. We need to get a source, or a say, particles being created or destroyed. All right. So this gives the propagator, and this one gives the Feynman rule. Now, b of phi for this case. as John would be a phi cubed theory. But I could have a b of phi with a phi to the fourth. If I was using a phi to the fourth theory, we wouldn't have the gamma like this, we would have a different gamma. Let's do phi to the fourth. <coughs> Lambda phi to the fourth in Euclidean space, gives a four-point vertex. And that would be the Feynman rule. Two Feynman rules for lambda phi to the fourth. And what would the numbers come together like? Let's do it, all right? Let's set it all up using these two Feynman rules, the lambda phi to the fourth theory instead of phi cubed. <clears throat> well, 
Well, we first of all, we're going to have the propagator. But to lowest order, we're going to have a slightly different case now. We're have, going to have a setting sun kind of diagram where momentum comes in here and goes out there. So the two-point Green's function for momentum coming in and coming out the same way is going to look like this. Plus higher order terms, okay? Lowest order term and higher order term. So we get So now we break this guy up into parts, and what would that look like? Well, we have a propagator, the vertex, another propagator, and another propagator. And it's pretty easy to stick them all together. Well, this one goes in first. Now, I'm going to talk about this in a second, this factor here. First of all, we have these two propagators. Two propagators, this one and this one. But now we've got a loop and vertex propagator. We're going to label the momentum here Q and the momentum here P. Different momenta labels. And so around the loop, oh, Q. Uh, what else do I have? Okay, that's all. We're integrating around the loop. For Q squared, that two propagators. Now we have a factor here. All right. We have to put in the gamma, the lambda, that's part of this job here. But with it, a small change. <coughs> there are four ways to connect this diagram to this final momentum. And once I connect up once, there are three legs left, three ways to connect to this one. So we have to have four times three as being the factor in front of it, and then a minus sign, and it just gives lambda over 2 for that factor there. Now the next thing to be done is to work out this integral. We will do that in the next lecture.